here now and here we are again. Okay. I'm in a bit of a rush, rough shape here, you know, but things are getting better. Good. Oh, Steve, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You must be following, you know, the, uh, what should we call it now? Student revolt, you know? Uh, well, the the, P the PFLP calls it a, a, an uh, antifada. Antifada. That's they call it, but I, whatever. I mean, definitely it's a revolt on the campuses in the U.S., and it's supposed to spread around the world soon. Um, demanding divestment, uh, showing solidarity with the Palestinian resistance, um, and they're being attacked wherever wherever they are standing up and being organized or being attacked uh, physically, uh, attacked by the police. Legally now, there's laws in Congress to try and stop them from trying to make officially it a crime to um, organize in support of Palestine, saying it's anti-Semitic. But you know, that's that's kind of where we are right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is around the world now. Uh, I mean, there's a <clears throat> student in camp. Oh, sorry. I, my microphone is right here. Uh, <clears throat> there are student encampments in uh, France, England, Good. Italy, Good. Need... Germany. Yeah, you know, like it's spreading all over the world. That's good. Yeah. We need to spread. Need and uh, two uh, Iranian universities have offered scholarships to any American students that are expelled from their universities. <laughs> okay. Well, that's that's that's. That's very kind of them. Yeah, that solves that problem right there. You know, oh, I mean, subset, you know, and they by scholarship they mean you know not only tuition if they have tuition in the first place, but you know residence costs, you know living costs. Students you know, have to live, you know, and here they're drained of their blood in order to get some studies done in the United States. That is, but uh, elsewhere, in, you know, like here in Quebec, you know we. Uh, we have, you know, next to no tuition. France, there's no tuition. United States, tuition, all over the place, plastered. Oh, oh. And okay. that's what makes this, and that's what makes this entire struggle, this entire situation, to me, kind of unique. Um, you know, you, these are these are, even though there are members of the working class, and I'm going to assume some poor people in, in these universities. In general, these are middle class to upper middle class students, mm. uh, because we're talking about you. What the major university in the United States are very competitive to get in, and these people who are protesting are at the major colleges. Major meaning the ones that have at least three or four grad, at least at least three or four graduate schools: mm. school of medicine, school of law, school of engineering, school of business, school of nursing, something like that. So these are major institutions, and for Iran to make such an offer, I hope that there is an there's a deluge of, of people who, who are who are eager to go. Um, one one of the demands that people have raised in this country is to overturn any suspensions, any expulsions, and any criminal charges against the students. Mm -hmm. um, it's very interesting, though. Um, Abraham, because the way the media is playing this, let me give you an example of the of the media play. On Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, or Wednesday night, Thursday morning, when up to 200 um, violence-inflicting thugs attacked the encampment at UCLA, okay? Yeah. Right before then, the chancellor of the university Said he was he was going to he wanted to end in the encampment. Huh. Now, the first attack was by the fascists. Yeah, they attacked with with rockets, fireworks, knives, bats, um, bear, bear spray. Um, they came with the intent to harm people. Now. Every, not everybody, but in Los Angeles, the newspapers were clear. There was no police presence for hours, and this was an attack. 
around this country, around the country, uh, they said, "Oh, there was a clash, a clash between different different factions." Therefore, the violence of the of the paras, the paramilitaries, the pro imperialists, the pro Zionist forces, was excused as oh, they're 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 just clashing. Since since the since the um, encampment was destroyed, it has been it seems to have been in the news forgotten that this was an attack, mm-hmm. and the governor himself had to cover his ass. But remember, this is a state camp, a university of the of the state campus, mm-hmm. one of the top universities in the United States. And for this is this is where having a, a global view forced him to say something. Just trust me. As I talk to you right now, there are lawsuits, maybe class actions was being filed against the university. I know at, at, at USC there have to be. The people there are more wealthy than students at UCLA. Mm-hmm. So the the legal liability they created. For themselves is being totally dismissed by by the press because the press has to um, this um, create the create the image of the pro Palestinian groups as being um, disruptors, as being anti Semites, mm-hmm. as being anyone no one worthy of being concerned about their their legal or physical safety, mm-hmm. and that's really been. One of the real, um, I wouldn't say uh, down marks, but one one of the real concerns I've had re- reading the news and watching watching the watching the the political tea leaves in the United States, no one except some people in local in LA or in the state state of California, no one has condemned the attack on the students anywhere. I mean, no politicians, no one with with some political clout. We'll say that that, the, that people, students at Columbia should not have been arrested. Students at USC should not have been arrested. Students at wh- wherever in the United States, there have been up to 2,000 arrests. Yeah. 2,000. That's a lot of people. Yeah. And no one is demanding their, their, their trials and charges be dropped. What they want it seems as though the, the federal government, I, I think this comes from the top. This is my opinion based on how the U.S. works. This come from the top of the White House, from um, the Department of Education. Whoever can control policy, they want these encampments to end, and they can do whatever they can to repress the students. But any physical attacks on the students is being excused. Mm-hmm. Oh well, they're 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 doing this, and they have to be punished, so let's just beat them up. Mm. And wherever the attacks have, wherever the violence has occurred on 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 the screen, such as such as, as such as at 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 Emory University, where they t- took a, a professor down to the ground, smashed her head against the concrete, etc., on the cameras for the world to see. Mm. This has been excused. Mm. And it just shows me that at this stage of the game, at least with the student protests, the government and the deep state essentially are not, will not allow criticism of this these violent attacks to be aired in a meaningful way by the U.S. press. Now, the L.A. Times, I guess the local media in L.A., have said something, they have to say something because it's so obvious. Mm. But and the governor said well, he had not talked about the violence. He's talking about oh well, you guys you guys took too long because he, he his university doesn't look too good, does it? Mm. No, it does not. So there's a lot of embarrassment. I think they're trying to cover it up to hush it up. They want to, they want to call for a quote an investigation, which will accomplish nothing. As we all know, every investigation in the United States is always a cover up, mm-hmm. be it be it the assassination of um, Kennedy, 
Kane Kane murder was never investigated. I mean, mm -hmm. anyone who is any all these investigations are always a whitewash in general. Um, but that's my statement to those to our viewers that the U.S. state is determined to betray the pro-Palestinian cause as as um, disruptors to education and um, um, anti-Semitic, mm -hmm. and that's that, that's they're sticking to that line. Um, yeah, that's that that's the that's how I see the situation right now. Yeah, so true, and all of that in spite of the uh, the proof, uh, the video that I circulated even that showed the Zionists fascists attacking the section of the barricade at UCLA that had written on it "Jews for Palestine," okay. <laughs> and so and they shouted to the you know the Zionists you know we're Jewish, they said we don't care the Zionists said you know in return. Well, I, I, I want I want to say something about this. This is a civil war, Jewish civil war. You know, it's coming down to exactly. Um, I think that's a very good point. But I want to I want to argue that those who attacked the demonstration students, those who attacked the demonstration who were not police, I'm of I'm of the uh, belief that they are members of the Proud Boys and other violent groups, and here's why. Um, about forty years ago. Uh, in Greensboro, North Carolina, a group of anti-racist communists were having a rally in in the black community against the KKK against the KKK terror. It was it, it was it was an organized demonstration. The police had a they had a permit for a march, etc. The police went on lunch around noon. The Klan showed up at twelve ten, and, and opened fire on the on the demonstration. It was very convenient that the Klan showed up right when the cops left. Uh -huh. Because the Klan knew they had, they had been working with the cops. And they found out where and they, when the cops were going to be leaving. Mm -hmm. I, I'm of the opinion that the, that, the, that, the U, that the UC LA administration and the UC police knew these, these people, these young men, had assembled and, and were attacking the demonstration. There are reports that they were even on site and just watching it, or go, go, watching things go down. So, the violence that came up to UCLA, to me, was was sanctioned and endorsed by the administration and the powers that be. And I'm just saying another example occurred a few decades ago when the police disappear or are not present, and then one side attacks, then the, the fascists. And the paramilitary types attack um, the demonstration, and nothing is done to them. Nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, so far, it's not even been a conversation piece. Like, yeah. Okay, they, you know, they can just do this, mm -hmm. and that's the danger of the of this kind of of this kind of event in terms of the rights of people to even be quote unquote protected by a supposed neutral body, which isn't neutral. The police are not neutral. Yeah. But they they essentially said, at least on the college campuses, if 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 say you want to demonstrate, your safety is on you. Because you know, because we're 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 gonna allow the fascists to attack you. And once we feel it's it, enough has been done, then they will come in and attack you. Because what they did the next day is the, the cops came and it tore down the them tore, tore down the encampment. Mm -hmm. The next day, the next day. Again, the goal was to get rid of the encampment, not to defend the right of the students to demonstrate. So yeah. that's always been the goal, to stop the protest at all costs. And, yeah. and if somebody wants to come um, throw rockets and pepper spray you and bear spray you and attack you, oh, well, that's just what it took to uh, get rid of you. And if yeah. you got an injury, oh, well, you just got injured. Yeah. But I tell you right now, and this is there will be individual lawsuits if they have already been filed, and that's yeah, kind of right now, that's kind of where it is, but that's kind of where it is right now. Uh, I don't know of any organized fight back by the students around this issue of police, police, um, police, and the UC police department and the state compliance with the attacks. I'm hoping this becomes a narrative they will will 
um, up, will take up because it has to be shown, it has to be exposed. That this is what happened. It yeah. wasn't a clash. It was an attack. Yeah. And if the state is allowed to get away with this, then there then there will be other attacks. That's all. Yeah. This, this was planned, and I, the violence, the use of knives, and the bear spray, um, speaks to not just the fraternity boys on college campuses, but somebody else. That's yeah. all. Yeah, and then they complain about outside agitators. <laughs> Well, there, yeah. there, there, there they are. Yeah, those are the way they are, outside agitators for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I say I saw a video even of uh, University of South Carolina, the uh, academic uh, uh, head of the Department of uh, Jewish Studies, you know, gray-haired grandma type lady, you know, on the yeah. front line there with the cops who came to attack. Wow. And I think I hear her say, you know, "fuck off" to the cops. Next thing you know, she gets dragged out of the mass of demonstrators there, pulled along, thrown down to the ground, you know, uh, handcuffed and taken away. You know, this grandma. (laughs) Yeah, 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 no, no. uh, There was, to me, see, this is, this belies the rhetoric from the state. Oh, let's de-escalate the situation. Let's de-escalate. No, there was no attempt to de-escalate. None whatsoever. No, there was no there was no discussion about de escalating. Especially when you grab a senior, okay? He shows just mm. disrespect to the elderly. Mm. That that sends a real signal that you don't care about any anything nor they don't nor, care about anything at all. No, they, no. they don't care. They don't care because mm. you know it's just it's just how it and it also says this is not a civil society. When it comes down to it, violence is the way that they speak. Violence, sanctions, and death. And yeah. that's what they want. And that's what the yeah. police, especially in Texas, mm. in Texas, when they just came at those students, just and they, they had done nothing. The rights of the students is simply being attacked. And that's what's going on. Mm. And but a lot I'm, I haven't really checked the squad's website, you know, the so-called squad, yeah. just to see just to see what they say, just to see what they say. Yeah. I haven't checked um I haven't checked um, CARE or other Muslim groups just to see what they say. But it, I'm curious to see what they're saying because that's mm-hmm. what's occurring here mm-hmm. is the support for the right of self-determination for Palestinians. Yeah. That support cannot is not supposed to even occur. And on a lot, but on a large measure, it is occurring. And all they can do is attack it and physically mm-hmm. and, and now try to pass laws that make make such uh, make such manifestations and, and, and anti Semitic, so we need to call on people around the country and around the world to step up, bring this to your workplace, bring this to your to your school, go out there and support the demonstration or or, or create your own your own manifestation of support for Palestine, because the Palestinians are looking, the world is looking, and. The fact that there are other encampments and other protests around the world seem to me saying that this this is something that people of the world are seeing that they must support. So I I, I think it's 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 a it's a great development. It troubles the ruling class. It troubles the ruling class mm. when they shut down schools mm. early. Mm. When they shut the campus down early, so it's it's over it's over for the year. Mm. That means they're they're that they're. they're that they that, that they feel that they feel troubled behind this, yeah. that they can't control it. Yeah. So it's the way to camp. They can't wait to campus as a place, that of a place of organization. Yeah. That's what that's all about. Yeah. Well, you know, they they remember what happened during the '60s. You know, with the student revolts against the uh, war in Vietnam, and uh, they tried to stop that. You know, but it didn't work. They even sent in the National Guard, yep. that kill, started shooting students. And that's when you know, uh, you know, that's when um, the uh, the uh, American uh, war in Vietnam failed. You know, you know, at that point, you know, when they were shooting down students, you know, they they and, and exposed, you know, that uh, what they were doing, you know, to the Vietnamese, you know, is what they were willing to do to Americans as well. Well, that was too much for Americans to take. 
So, uh, you know, that really helped to bring that war to an end. And uh, that's why I think Biden, as he was walking at a press conference and wouldn't answer any questions about the student revolt, you know, finally had to answer, you know, when some journalist shouted at him, do you want to, or do you support bringing in the National Guard? And he had to say, no, that was it. You know, like, no, no way <laughs> can he afford, you know, to let the National Guard in there, you know. And they, of course, they would come in there, you know, to use maximum force, and they would kill a few students in order to intimidate, you know, everybody else. Right. And he knew that this would be the end of his administration and the Democratic Party for sure. So well, he said, that's no, a, that's, a, that's, that's it, very, that's all. That's, that's very good. That's very good that you mentioned that because what if someone, oh, so far, no one has been killed by the by the fascist and the pro zionist or by the police. Mm. But I, I'm going to say, I hope I'm wrong, I think inevitably someone will be killed. Not because I want it to happen. But I do think that at a certain point, someone is going to let, is going to, quote, take, take the gloves off. Mm. And we might have a Chicago... 1968 scene at, at one of the demonstrations. So I'm wondering what is the state doing to avoid that? Because eventually someone is going to be killed. Hmm. This could have easily have happened at UCLA. It could have easily have happened there. Easily. The level of violence that was inflicted for hours by the by the by the Zionist um paramilitaries on the students, the use of uh the of the, of the weapons the knives, the bats, the bear spray, et cetera, the firecrackers. I'm hoping there are no deaths, but I do think it's going to happen eventually, not because I want it to happen, but because, this, you know, like, just like you said, the, I, I, don't think, I don't think that Biden wants that on his hands, especially since these two are not, they're not going to be voting for him for president. These people can vote, and they're not going to vote. So he really has lost. He may have lost his election right here. Yeah, yeah. Because you no, know, this won't, these people are not going to vote for him. No, they're not. Yeah, they're going to say no. We'll we'll just sit this one out. Mm. We're eighteen to twenty four and twenty three. It's our first election anyway, maybe or second, mm. and we're not going to vote for you. We're now we're not voting for Trump. We're not voting for you, and he may have lost. This may have cost him the presidency. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. Yeah. This yeah. because this this is organization. These are people. If people are determined enough to go to, and risk getting suspended, risk getting expelled from school, risk getting arrested, voting is nothing for them to miss. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I think it's that election. So I think I think it's over for Biden. Let's Biden get. And remember also, um, Abraham, that the Palestinians, that the Air, the Arab community in Michigan and other parts of the country. Oh, yeah, it's already yeah. said that they're not going to vote for Biden. They've already yeah. shown they're not going to vote for him. Yeah. So he's really in trouble. This may be this may be the nail in the coffin. The, the demonstrations and the attacks of demonstrators, the attacks, may have been it may be the coffin that caused the election. I don't think these people are going to vote for him. Yeah. I don't think. I mean, I may be wrong, but even he, even here in Montreal, you know, during my vigil at the Jewish Community Campus. I received a number of threats, you know, so the, the level of violence, you know, is, is threatened to be yes. increased and these people are capable of doing so. And uh, yes. they think that they can get away with it as well, you know, because well, they're they supported. Better. There's even, you know, a, a law now, you know, like what they call it, the you know, Anti-Semitism Awareness Act. I well, yeah, think it's it, been well, passed. No, it is not a law yet. It has been passed by one house of the Congress. The, uh -huh. other, house, the other house has to amend it and pass it, and then Biden has to sign it. But it has been passed by one body, yes. It has been created as, as a bill yeah. that that can become law if the Senate approves it and if Biden signs it. So, yes, it is possible. It's not law yet, but the fact that they passed it so quickly yeah. is, is, to me, reminiscent of what, ha what happened in Germany. The yeah. way that the movement there has literally been crushed I yeah. mean, when people who come to speak at conferences are banned at the airport from entering the country. Mm. Okay. And to see that a settler, and this shows also, I think people should really um, um, become aware of the connection between 
the colonization of the Palestinian land and the attacks on the Palestinian people. The reason that, they, that you have these attacks on the Palestinian people is that the Israelis have basically established a fascist society over mm. the Palestinian, in my opinion. How else can you explain the home demolitions? Mm. Where in the world are homes demolished of mm. people of a certain uh, ethnic group? In Israel, that's it. In the United mm. States, you know, um, the so called the, the 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 natives were moved 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 up the land by force. Mm. So home demolition, the whole issue, I mean, everything about the the laws that uh, come, that allow the dispossession and oppression of Palestinians. To me, to me, that's a that's a fascist state. Yeah. So yeah. The colonization of the of the people, theft and violence violence against the people to steal the land, and now the mass murder through the 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 post October seven period by the Israeli by the Israeli defense forces. The bombing of the Iranian embassy in Syria. Mm. It's a major military aggression. Mm. That's just, I mean, that shows Israel had no fear of doing yeah. it. Mm. Okay, so that's what's happening at campus. And that's why it's very important for our viewers to <laughs> become involved, to support, to be vocal, to get organized and fight back because we need to maintain our movement. There, there's going to be ebbs and flow in any struggle, but we have to be determined to fight and determined to win. Yeah. I think when you refer to a fascist state, I mean, uh, you refer to a fascist society even. I think yes. that you're right. You know, it's not just a fascist government. It's not just a fascist state that has right. been treating right. Palestinians, right. you know, to, to this, right. you know, racism for 75 years, yes. 76 yes. years now. Yes, yes. But, but the whole society, you know, the whole educational system, you know, uh, the way that they pluck, you know, the students out of high school and shove them into the military right away where they're indoctrinated to obey orders and nothing else and not to think. You know, this is a really, you know, like very advanced fascist society. Yeah, and their yeah, supporters, yeah, you know, uh, yes, yes. are willing to, you know, like attack you know, us uh, protesters, you know, everywhere else. The issue that they're making this is, is, you know, whether it's anti-Semitism or not, okay? They're making it into an issue of anti-Semitism. They're saying that all the protesters are anti-Semitic. Even the Jewish protesters, you know, they try to dismiss the Jewish protesters, you know, by saying that they're just self-hating self Jew, yeah, Jewish so, people. Yes, exactly. But I think if they want to make it the issue, you know, then I think the Jewish student protesters, you know, have to have to stand up and speak out, you know, even more so than they are now. You know, so far they've just been. Uh, oh, good. So far, uh, you know, what we have seen is uh, just uh, students there as supporters. But I think the students, Jewish students who are protesting, have to take uh, a step forward and speak into the mic and tell everybody, you know, that this is not an issue of anti Semitism, that they are there, you know, because they're protecting the name of the Jewish people against a state that claims to be representing the Jewish people, that does not represent, uh, you know, even a majority of the Jewish people, you know, who don't even live in that state, don't have a vote in that state, have nothing to do with the government of that state, yet they claim to be speaking in name and acting in, on behalf of the Jewish people. This has to be thrown out the window and has to be smashed here and now. And uh, uh, this, uh, that's a very, very good point. I'm glad I, I got the idea of the fascism. I was listening to a discussion last night of a, a scholar from some university. He talked about he talked about Palestine. He talked about Ukraine. He talked about just um, how the word fascism has been made to think just Italy, just just um, Germany, and just Japan. But there are in there are indicators of what of what. Um, a fascist society and government would be linked to, and he linked it to the colonization of a pre of 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 the others peoples by another government. And you're right, the society of Israel has become a fascist society. I mean, we can't we we have to not mince words here. Yeah, what's occurring yeah. here with consent? With consent of the so-called governed. Okay. Yeah, sixty-eight percent support, you know, of the Netanyahu government still. So, so let's uh, say, maybe well, they want to get rid of Netanyahu, 
but the government there and what they're doing in Gaza, you know, like they're still supported by 68% of the population yeah. there. So, you know, like- well, I, is... I, 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 I would like to come back to something you just said though, the need for the Jewish students to step out, to step out. Mm. And I mm. think you're right about that. I think you're, uh, we need to create some spaces so that can happen. Yeah. Because right now it's just a protest. And it, it's seen like it's portrayed by the state as a mob. And yeah. um somehow we have to create the the space and encourage these students to anonymously, maybe we cover we do we do security on their faces and that, you know, this kind of thing. But well, however we have to do it because this has to be said. Yeah. That what's happening in Israel, what's, what the Israelis are, have done and their government is doing to the Palestinians does not represent the best interests of the Jewish people around the world. It does not represent that. It's not right. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, right. In the minutes that we have left, you know, I would just conclude that, you know, the Jewish students, you know, so far, I mean, coming out, you know, as a Jewish student, you know, but they have no idea that the Jewish Bund, you know, long ago criticized Zionism, you know, for failing to resolve the, the Jewish oppression in Europe, failing to oppose fascism, and in fact collaborating with fascists for their own interests in setting up a state apparatus, which is representative of basically the Jewish national bourgeoisie and nothing more. And everybody else is going along with this? No way. You know, those Jewish students have to become historically minded and speak out, and they have to speak out in the name of a Jewish Bund movement. They have to become advocates of a Jewish revolutionary movement now, and saying that they are opposing Zionism and that they right. are a, a force, a movement, you know, and even a, you know, a political movement now, which is regenerating as the Jewish Bund, as the Jewish Socialist Bund in particular. And then that will speak in the name of the Jewish people and not, you know, the Zionist state. That's what they have to defeat. They have to defeat the idea that Israel is representing the Jewish people. And I think they can do it now. They're strong enough to be able to do that. But they're not even aware of their own role. They're not, not even aware of how crucial their role is. And this is what I hope, you know, this video amongst others, you know, will help to, to correct. I agree. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so let's get this out. And uh, I look forward to uh, the uh, movement uh, growing over the coming week because it doesn't seem like the Zionist state is willing to back down. I mean, they're letting more food supplies in, but, you know, like, it's still a trickle. You know, 325 trucks even, you know, like, is not, you know, anything compared to what they need, you know, which is 600 trucks a day. So, you know, the starvation is still undergoing, and there could be, you know, mass famine happening as well, in spite of uh, all the little efforts that are being sort of made and the words, you know, but that Blinken comes up with. Keeps on repeating, you know, encouraging, you know, the, the caution to, to deal with, you know, like civilian populations, you know, like what's the point of even saying it? You know, like he knows that they're not going to listen to him anyway. You know, it's just play acting. You know, this is role playing. It's pathetic. The damage, the damage has been done and the damage will continue to be done un, un, until until the occupation and, and, and the siege on Gaza ends and reconstruction begins. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Right.